Hello my crafty friends, I hope you are well. Um, a little bit of a different video from me today. Um, the reason for the video, yes I'm going to make a project, I'm going to make this absolutely gorgeous card using an embossing folder and we're going to be doing some inking but it's the tools with which I'm going to do the inking. They're not sold as craft products, they're sold as something else and I can save you almost well a, a quarter of the price of buying them the same products but with a craft title on them so stay tuned and i'm going to show you how you can save an awful lot of money so the purpose of this video today is to show you that sometimes when you go to look for crafting products that you need i'm talking about things like tools then very often because it's got the word craft in front of it, we get charged so much money for them. Now, I wanted some little mini blending brushes. Excuse the noise. I just get them out of the bag. And I was looking all over. And I was finding they were 5 99 for five. Or I even saw 12 66 13 99 for six. Which I thought was really expensive. So I'm thinking about the blending brushes with this sort of a head, but in smaller. So I had a look and I went onto Amazon. So I didn't go onto any other websites. I just went onto Amazon and I found these little brushes. And officially they're called lash brushes. Um, I've worn false eyelashes. And when you go to have your false eyelashes taken off, they put the solution on and then they just brush over your eyelashes with this. Or you can use them to clean your eyelashes when you wear false eyelashes. Um, you put them quite close to the roots. And these were, let me show you, a pack of 20... Now, they don't come in a fancy bag or anything, come like this. A pack of 20 for 7 99 They're working out about somewhere between 40 and 50p per brush, as opposed to 5 99 for five if you buy craft ones, or even 12 66 for six. They were two pounds odd each. These are less than 50p each, and they are exactly, exactly the same. They're just labelled for something different and so I thought why not have a go and I'm going to show you why I think that it's worth having a look around sometimes so I've got a 3d embossing folder and you've probably seen lots of techniques where we can ink on the deboss side and we can do all sorts but sometimes when you want to get down into these nooks and crannies it's quite hard and it's quite hard to get really focused I'm actually going to put a piece of black card underneath so that hopefully you can see it a bit better so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get did i have a yellow one or is this my yellow one let me get another yellow one out um so yeah come like this i'm going to find a container or a purse a, you know a pouch or something to put them in so just slide them out the packet i'm not going to keep them in the packets so i have got my 3d embossing folder so the technique i'm going to show you about coloring on embossing folders works really well with your 3d embossing folders so i'm on the deboss side so that's down so it's flat there and it goes down into there so i'm going to pick up some ink with my little brush and look at that look at how well it picks up the ink and then i'm just going to go into all of those corners i'm going to tap it in i'm going to put the ink there and i'm really going to get as much ink in as i can now i'm using the ink the best ink that i own because you know what i'm like it's, let's have a look at what you've got so i'm using the crafters companion duet ink pass now the nearest sort of comparable you might fine it's possibly your oxide inks so that would work really well with this so can you see i'm getting it right in to all those grooves you couldn't do this with a brayer or you could do it with um it'd be quite hard with the padded blending brushes you know the ones that i normally use. if i got one on the back of one of these somewhere i don't think i've got one on one of these oh those one of those ones because it wouldn't get down into the grooves enough so i'm just really really going into those grooves with my little blending brush now these are you're going to use them for so much more than just this this is just me giving you an example of how i would use them now don't worry if it goes up onto the side of the um, embossing fold i'm going to show you how to get that out in a minute so really work it into those grooves go over we can do another coat then i'm going to pick up the orange pick up the orange different brush i've got 20 so i'm all right and I'm just going to tap it into the centre of my sunflower. This is I just realised this is the second sunflower um, project I've done in a couple of weeks. 
obviously that time of year. Now I'm taking this outside of the centre, so I'm starting to get it to blend into that yellow. Can you see I'm taking it up around there and blending it in? And I'm still going to just sort of do my blending just as I would if it was on the card. So there's the yellow. Um, where am I going to go next? I'm going to go with some green. Now you don't have to do, I'm not going to do all the colours in one pass. I'm going to show you how to put it back in and do a second colour. Green. So let's, I always have to do it on the right hand side. And I'm just going to, re this really gets into those, those grooves. I can really get down into all of those points those nooks and crannies i can get down into the stems for that plant down into that stem and stem there and i've got this don't worry we can we, what i'm going to do is i'm going to do one coat and then i'll show you how to have a look and we can go and do another if you notice i'm I do, i'm not too concerned if it's going on to the embossing folder we'll deal with that in a minute it's about making sure i've really got down into that groove and picked it all up like that so we can just pop it on like that see because you've got the fine brussels i can really really get into there there we go right so once i've got that on i'm going to do another cut couple of colors but i'm going to leave it for a minute so then next thing i've got is i've got a little stamping block just a regular stamping block and a piece of kitchen towel i'm going to give my kitchen towel a little blast of water just the tiniest blast, just, I just want it very slightly damp. And I'm going to, you know when you're doing sanding, you put, make a sanding block. That's effectively what I'm doing here. So this is very lightly damp. And I'm just going to run that over. So what it's going to do is it's going to, because it's on the sanding block, it can't get down into the grooves. So it's not going to lift the ink from inside those grooves. It's only going to take the ink off the top. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get a piece of card. This is the only sort of, natural coloured I've got. So I'm just going to move this out of the way. I'm going to get that and I'm going to give it a very light blast of my water. Only just because I think the um, the inks are going to react better if it's just got a little bit of water on. And also you get a really good emboss. So wet side, I'm going to put it wet side facing up. I always like to go into there. So pop that on like that, and then I'm going to run that through my embossing folder. Now remember, this is a 3D embossing folder, so boss, a plate, metal shim, magnetic shim, sorry, and plastic plate. We don't need our second cutting plate. It's a 3D embossing folder. It'll get stuck if we try and do too much. There, so I'm going to pop that through. This works. Look at that. Doesn't that look beautiful? So it's really picked up that colour, hasn't it? So I'm going to, so we're doing it on this side, take it back. I'm going to bring it round. The yellow could do with a little bit more on my sunflowers. So I'm going to come round with the yellow again, do another coat. It's absolutely fine. And another coat just round here. Oh, I need to put that black underneath so I can actually see. That is so much easier, putting that black underneath, isn't it? It really shows it up i'm actually going to use this is a piece of black we're actually going to use in the card in a minute so i'm going to keep going in with the yellow now i thought we could go in with a little bit of red just around here building up those colors there we go i only need a little bit and a little bit of orange just building it up so i'm really working those colors in now you can emboss and then colour over the top, but then you you t you can get a little bit of ink onto the um, cardstock. This way it keeps it nice and clean. Okay, so I'm going to come in with some purple next. I'm going to pick up purple in my flowers here, my alternate flowers, you know, the flowers that aren't sunflowers. And we can do that and that just there. that I'm really working it in into all those nooks and crannies and then I'm just going to do a little bit more green I think just looking at that in certain places certain bits it just needs a little bit more just to enhance that give it a little bit more depth you could be coming in with other colors I could you know I could even go in with a little bit of red to give it a bit of an autumnal feel if I wanted to you know, it's entirely up to you. Just do that carefully. Just down here. 
because I didn't go right. See, the great thing is I can get into, look at that, I can get into the tiny little bits between those petals that I wouldn't be able to do with other tools. I think it's just amazing, but it's just about finding tools. Sometimes the minute they say, oh, it's a craft product, you pay a premium for it. Now, you know, these brushes, um, I'm sure a lot of ladies use them in their um, eyelash businesses. So why not? Why can't we use them for our craft? I just think, why not indeed? I'm just going to add a little bit more. Sometimes it just needs to settle and then it lets you go back in and put even more depth on. I don't think I got that one last time. The more ink you can put on, the better the result you're going to get. Just making sure it gets into all those. I've got the right tool, so let's have a go. Let's go around there. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? So next thing I need to do, we need to bring in this piece of card paper kitchen paper on my block remember keep it nice and tight you don't want any if you if it starts to sag it'll go into the groove so all I want to do is wipe the ink off the raised bit so you can see it's not touched that now this is where you've got to be careful so what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to slide it back in and once it's in look can you see it won't move that's because it's in the right place. It's back in the grooves. So all I tend to do is bend it down. And I can see as I'm going down, it's just going back into those grooves. So I'm holding it nice and tight, putting it back on that plate, putting that one on top of there, and I'm going to run that through. Right, look at this. Oh, ready for the reveal. Wow, look at that. Now, that is completely coloured, and there is no ink on the background. There's certain bits, if you wanted to, you could go in and do a little bit more because I know I I'm not going to get it on the background around there. But I'd be very careful coming out to these lee petals because it's going to go on the background and that's not what I want. Um, there was something else I was going to do. I was going to get a little bit of orange and go in that centre because I know it'd be fine. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that stunning? Now, this is a bit of a false one to do because this one does have stencils this um embossing folder there we go no, get it the right way around there we go so you can do the coloring on this one separately but i was pretending it didn't have the stencils because the effect that i wanted it was as I, I didn't have a really good 3D embossing folder that didn't have stencils. So let's just pretend this embossing folder never had the stencils to go with it. So it's just, you know, how I've done it. OK, so I'm just going to get my regular blending brush. They still have their places. And I'm just going to go around the edge just to soften it up. There we go. And again, this, this works a lot better as long as your card's dry. You remember I spritzed it before. If it's a little bit damp it might go a little bit patchy so just make sure your cardstock's dry mine's dried lovely now just going around with the yellow just to mix it up and then i'm going to just put a little bit of the orange on there and i'm just going to come round all the way around picking that up picking that up just coming round the edge just like that there we go so just picking it up just adding in that color there we go i think that should do isn't that pretty i really do love the effect i think i've got a thing for sunflowers at the moment so we're going to keep this really simple this is going to be such a simple card so we've got the, the um, embossed image there let's get a little bit of glue so we can get some glue on the back let's go all the way around if your card's a little bit cockled, a bit, bit creased, go in with something like your Sticks to Red Liner because that will straighten it back out. And then we can go in there. Remember, it's got, it's got grooves, so you, your glue's going to suck into those. So I'm going to lie that on. Oh, I didn't say, this was a 5 by 7 embossing folder. I always cut my card a bit short, so I did 4 and 3 quarters by 6 and 3 quarters. So, yeah, just because... Um, that's how I prefer to use my embossing folder. I don't put my card right up to the edge. So black layer, and then I'm going to do a yellow layer to pick up that gorgeous colour. So we can just do a bit more, 
glue on there. So it's a nice flat card for all you lovely people who want to post and say, you know, you can't, you don't want cards that are too layered. But I just think this is so pretty. We can put that on there. There we go. And then I took a um, seven three quarter inch square card and I've just trimmed it down to um, just over seven and a half, literally just a smidgen past seven and a half by five and a half. Um, so yes, so I've gone up by like half an inch that's bigger than the embossing folder. We can put that on to there. So virtually to finish, I've just found a couple of sentiments. I'm going to grab my tweezers and I'm going to grab some 3D glue. Let's see if I can do it with this. There's not very much in there. I don't know where the 3D glue is I had the other day. It seems to have disappeared. So I'm going to pop, put one on there. I had one that was much fuller. One. Is it? I find it easier with the tweezers. Let's go. You're amazing. Making sure it stays straight. And then it does feel strange sometimes doing it that way because I want to naturally read across there. But sometimes it's about, you know, stepping outside and doing it a little bit different. Be you. Then we're going to grab flat gems. I'm going to change my tweezers because I find these ones better. And then I'm just going to, oh, I'm going to have to get some more of these because I need some more of these tiny small ones. Let's go one, two and three and then tee these tiny little ones. And Oh no, they're, they're too small. I'm going to have to go with these small ones that I like. I'm going to put one in there. Oh, I'm definitely going to have to go hunting for some more of these, aren't I? I've only got two of these little ones left. And one on there. And that is all I would do. Isn't that a pretty card? Really simple, really quick. But the purpose of this, yes, it was to make a beautiful card, which I think is stunning, but it's to show you how don't be afraid to buy things, crafty tools that aren't labelled as craft because you could save yourself an awful lot of money yeah you might see those on um you know being sold by a craft company which that's fine if you want to buy them branded in the colors to match your craft company that's absolutely fine but if you want to save yourself a few pounds have a look around and see if you can find them sort of unbranded or maybe for advertisers something not to do with craft so i hope you've enjoyed that just a nice little top tip from me i've only used four of my brushes so i've got 16 left to go aren't they pretty though really really pretty so i'm loving those so until next time my friends you take care i hope you enjoyed that card quick card but it was really all about the brushes today and i will be seeing you again very soon so take care and i'll see you soon bye